Hello, Happy New Year and my first tutorial for 2020 and in this tutorial we're going to be using Richard Williams Animation Survival Kit and the first lesson is going to be about spacing and timing and we're going to use the bouncing ball as he did in his Animation Survival Kit book and first of all I'm going to start reading uh, caption from one of the pages leading on to the story about how to animate the spacing and timing and the bouncing ball. So it says, the bouncing ball says it all. The old bouncing ball example is often used because it shows so many different aspects of animation. And before that, I, it says it's all about the timing and spacing. I met Grim Natwick, born Myron Nodvik, in a Hollywood basement when he was in his 80s. Grim was the oldest of the great animators. Being ready in his 40s, being already in his 40s when he animated 83 scenes of Snow White in Disney Snow White and Seven Dwarfs. Previously, he designed Betty Boop for Max Fisher, or Fisher, I don't know how you pronounce that, for which he received nothing, and he was a furious about it till the day he died aged 100. I'll never forget the image of his big Norwegian American, of this big Norwegian American sitting in the golden twilight, extending his long arms and spatula hands saying, Animation, it's all in the timing and the spacing. Strange that the Americans were the ones to work this out. And then it also goes on to say, The ball overlaps itself when the slow part of the arc, but when it drops fast, it's spaced further apart. That's the spacing. The spacing is how close or far apart these clusters are. That is it. It's simple, but it's important. Spacing is the tricky part. Good animation spacing is a rare commodity. So, as you can see in my tutorial, as I was explaining the animation survival kit, I was also i'm narrating over it so i'm going to explain what i did in the previous part um i started off by creating a timeline where you can see 20 frames 10 frames 30 frames 10 frames 5 frames that is the timing line and then the spacing is between each point the ball hits the ground so for my guideline I had 20 frames for the beginning 10 frames for the middle one and 13 frames for the other one and 10 frames according to animation survival kit but i didn't then use all of those so i start off by doing a rough outline pass so i create a new video layer created a new video layer and then i drew on it and by each frame you use your right arrow when you're done with the frame click on right arrow moves on to the next frame you draw it you can switch on onion skins on the timeline you switch on onion skins i'm sure you already know that so we're just going to be using the animation survival kit from level one and level one is this lesson about the bouncing ball so we create our passing we'll create our passing to the contact pose 20 frames from the beginning to the start and then second layer will be our outline layer as you can see, I've put in an outline layer. And then next level will be to color it in. And then also when you create a new video layer, you can also mask it. When you're doing shadows and lightning. And you'll see later on. But here I'm using the paint bucket tool to quickly color in the points. And since it is a full outline with no gaps involved, it is easy to just click on it and you cover a lot of ground with this and you can see I sped up the video again so we can have a short tutorial on how to animate the bouncing ball and then the next phase will be to put in a shadow so again I'm gonna run through it again the first phase you do is the outline the rough outline where you gather all your data you plan ahead planning is very important you plan whether you're going to use 20 frames or 10 frames and 13 frames or 10 frames and that creates the plan and then I then had a guideline that I created on 
the background layer and then I put in a guideline and that it shows the direction or the path that my ball is going to take and then in that path I start drawing the first rough layer where the ball goes up and down hits the contact pose fits in 20 frames or be it 10 frames or 5 frames according to your spacing and speed of the bounce you want and then the second thing is you then go over and correcting some parts with your main outline and then after you've done your main outline you run through you can then go back again and double check and then after you double check you can then add color and then after adding color you then go back in to add lighting and this is what I'm now doing I am adding lighting there and then also when you're adding lighting you can put in your clipping mask so that you don't go over the lines and I'm sure you know how to do a clipping mask it's simple you right click click clipping mask when you right click on a layer and then from here I'm doing lighting and I'm not really taking too much care to which to be in detail or to actually have like an accurate light source or anything about that it's more of just implying that there is light there's a reflection there's shadow and the ball has volume and depth and it has weight and it's not just a flat piece of paper or a flat scribbly circle it actually has personality and also you can see I used elements of squash and stretch when it hits contact the weight pushes it down and then springs up it stretches when it's about to go down and stretches again to increase the speed to show speed illusion of speed illusion of weight and then from after you've done your first run through with the animation colored and then you can then add background and then for this one I just had a simple background where you just add the sky blue paint bucket tool new layer and it's done and then after that if it be the ball it needs speed lines to show speed show it running show movement I then added some white little streaks coming from the ball emitting from the ball just to show it's moving through a it's moving through something and it adds character and personality and also again I wasn't too accurate on how to do it on not how to do it but more of being accurate but for the purpose of this tutorial this shows that's the next stage where you add secondary animations and little bits that actually add character and personality and imply impact and movement and create a all-rounded better animation and then I then went on to add as it contacts you show impact lines where that it has hit something and then after that if you then put sound it will become more dramatic and even better when as soon as it hits there's a boom 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 and the animation has character personality instead of just a circle just going bounce 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 and that is pretty much level one of how to animate once you have that in you can animate any single thing in the world you can animate it using frame by frame and of course frame by frame I should warn you it is time consuming and as you can see in this video I actually had to cut in some parts of me doing the frames erasing getting them accurately and this is also still very rough it's just for tutorial purposes we have to keep it short keep the video short so that you keep glue it on and you can then um if you want to follow on or have one-on-one -on -one sessions i am available to give you one-on-one -on -one sessions where i'll really explain on step by step what you do in very in detail but for here i think you understand what i've done and how to do it and if you watch closely you can follow on on 
everything that I did from again I'll run it through from planning and then after planning I did my path where the path the boy is going to follow the movement where your character is going to follow and then after that I created the spacing I had a guide on how many frames are on a fit in the first spacing and the second spacing the third spacing fourth fifth and so on and then after that I did a rough outline and I went with that rough sketch and then after that I then went with the main outline. I did that with bold and then after that I went in and colored the circle using paint backer tool and masking and then I went to shadow added another masking layer new video layer and I masked it and then I colored the shadow in and then also did the lighting reflection and then we had our bouncing ball and then after that I added secondary animations the streaks the shadows and so on and then from there you have a finished product and that is what you can see right now that is a finished animation of the bouncing ball tutorial using the animation survivors kit so anybody can literally animate using that kit so get that richard williams animation survivor kit and let's start animating step by step together and for the next tutorial we'll be working on the next page and we'll find out what he wants us to do in the next page and hopefully by the end of the year we would have finished the animation survivors kit and we'll know how to animate from start to finish and then also just to add on for the final bits follow me on twitter Visit my website azureprinceinc.com. Visit my Twitter azureartinc. Instagram azureartinc. I'll leave the links below. And then also when exporting, we're exporting in 24 frames. That's another tip I need to remind you. Exporting in 24 frames, H.26, YouTube HDI, HD. And then we export that and then... You can have your bouncing animation. You can put it on loop later in editing and after effects or even Photoshop. You can then open your new document and then repeat this animation and create a loop. So that is level one on how to animate and it's now exporting. So please, let's animate for the next video. I hope to start on something else on the next level after the bouncing ball so please stay tuned for more and let's animate together questions please send them through if you need any help please don't hesitate to ask and enjoy life let's animate thank you